Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, Solomon Timothy has developed a 10x framework which he believes can double the revenue and profitability of your business. Solomon states that the 10x framework is not a numerical concept, but rather it is all about mindset. Solomon, your own entrepreneurial journey included plenty of obstacles and pivots along the way. Thank you so much, Carl, for having me. Super excited to be here. That is absolutely right. As entrepreneurs, if we don't make those adjustments in our business when the opportunity kind of shows up itself, we'll be left like the dinosaurs. I had to go from being a service business to a software business because if you're in the service industry, it's very difficult to scale. We basically built our own project management system. We built our own client onboarding system. We did our own client reporting system. We have to think like a software company, not like a service company. That's, that's the example that comes to my mind, Carl. When you talk about having to overcome major obstacles and pivots, what type of a culture do you need within a business to be able to manage that successfully? Yeah, so, so I've, I've trained my team to embrace change. And, and I think if you have a culture where people do not embrace change, boy, I mean, I'm in marketing there's not two days in a, in a week where something is not changing by Google or Facebook or something. So I wanted our team to understand that the only thing that's going to be constant is change. <laughs> and, and, then, and that is train them, give them the mindset that it's like we're talking about cookie-less browsers. That means there's no tracking. There's no this. Uh, Facebook and, and, and Apple had the biggest fiasco not too long ago where they wouldn't give any data. Prior to that, it was something else. Like you name it, there's not – a month where there's some drastic changes in my space. And if my team isn't adept to making these kind of real-time changes for our clients with their budgets that they've entrusted with, we wouldn't get the results that they need. You see what I'm saying? So instead of resisting change, like open AI changed our world, like people thought marketing is going to go out of business, we've been growing. And, and, and the reason is if we embrace it, then we'll use the new technology to get the clients the results that they're looking for. How have you embraced artificial intelligence in that respect? Yeah, so people says, well, artificial intelligence can create content faster than a human, which is true, it can create content, but it cannot create the kind of content that is in the voice and in the tone of your brand. Because we've been creating content manually for the last 17 years for my clients. We know exactly who their customers are. That is their ideal customer persona. And then we've been creating content for different kind of audiences, right? They might be selling to a CIO, CFO, and CEO, whoever. And they all have different problems that we've been writing content for. So what we use is we would use AI-assisted content, but then we would edit it with a real human to bring to the voice and the tone of the client that we've been getting to know over the last however many years. So... Can we speed up the production? Yes. But we don't just rely on that content and stick it on the website and say, well, AI is good and let's move on with our life. That's what probably a lot of the amateurs might do. But Google knows very well that it's AI-generated content, and so does other search engines. So if you really want to rank or you want to get anywhere with them, you really have to bring it to the, the client-specific. Your 10x framework aims to enable your clients to double everything in their business, but yet you characterize it not as a numerical concept, but rather you describe it as being about mindset. It really is. So, I mean, honestly, like, I wish I could put a tattoo that says 10x. And the the reason I say that is the decisions that you make today is what's going to dictate where you will be in about three or five years from now. If you make small decisions that is going to get you 20% more business, you're going to be about 1.2%, right? Like 1.2x. You know what I mean? If you make things that are going to get you an extra 50% business, you're going to be about 1.5x. Do you see what I'm saying? If you really double the volume of your, your inbound calls or the activity the salespeople are doing, you're barely going to do double because just by increasing sheer activity doesn't necessarily increase the sales volume. So the only way to really think about where you're going to be in, 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 in three years or five years is to know that about 80% of what you're doing today will not get you massive results. Only 20%, the old school principle, Pareto principle. So I like to ask my entrepreneur friends, and this is for the people I coach in our program and everything. 
is that what do you think about what you're doing today is going to be the one that really is going to set you apart and what you're really good at? And let's double down on that and forget about 80% of this minutia. That's really, you're just competing for the same amount of business, same amount of profit as everybody else. You're not really special. You don't have that, you know, that, that secret sauce. And what if we put that energy in making this one thing really, really radically different? You will become the authority in your space easily because you're picking a smaller niche. You're going to close more business. You're going to close bigger business. And you're going to be known for this one thing that everybody else is being generalist. You're a specialist. This is a, a different kind of mindset. And if they can do that, I promise you they're going to get way more business success than just trying to be an auto body shop with a little bit more location or the glass shop or the manufacturing plant with one more line that they added. They're all making incremental decisions that are only going to last incremental like kind of results. How can people listening this morning start developing that mindset for their businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, first of all, I put out a lot of free content. My vision is to be of as, as help as possible to as many entrepreneurs as possible. It's really to assess their business today, right? This would be my advice to assess their business. I mean, if they could just really make a little Excel spreadsheet, three columns, the thing that they think is going to get them incremental results will be on the on the first column. The thing that's not going to really change their business all that much this year or next year is the so-and-so column of the services. And the thing that they, if they doubled down and took all of the energy from first column and second column and put it into the third one, they will go ballistic. I'll give you a life example. I'm working with an entrepreneur who has been working in the government for two decades. And his offer was to go and help small businesses with growth because he actually is on the government contract side, you know, helping these guys win the contract because he's actually a procurement manager. He works for the government, picks these contractors. He switched his offer from being the growth guy, which is, hey, I'm going to help you figure out what you need in total, you know, with a lever so you grow. He says, what if I could teach you, and this is something he's passionate about, he never thought would be a business. What if I could teach you after working in the government, while well, my buddies who retired no longer work in the government, to show you exactly step-by-step how to go get government as your client. When he switched it, because that was one of his things he wanted to do, but it was a side, it was a side thing. He wasn't really going to focus on that. He gets most amount of his leads and his, his growth is in this one freaking thing. Do you know how many other business coaches are there that can help you grow your business by 10, 20, 30, 50, 100% maybe? There's not a lot of people who's got 100 years of experience combined can guarantee them that they're going to get listed. They don't know if they're going to win the contract. It's up to them. Like, those are the kind of life examples that I'm living through. What are the key features of your 10x revenue blueprint? Yeah, so we broke that down, Carl, into two things. We built what's called a growth formula. It's really, really simple. The first side of that is acquisition plus retention equals growth, right? Like, literally, that's it. Acquisition plus retention equals growth. If our audience, which is Write that down for a little bit. And, and everybody comes to me for acquisition. I need to get more customers. I need to get more customers. First of all, I teach them that it's not just getting more customers. It's also keeping your customers that's going to get you grow. Carl, would you agree or no? I would certainly agree. I agree. If you get equal amount of customers and you lose, you're kind of the same way next year. You're not going to grow. For so sure. So what I teach is, hey, in order to acquire, which is really, really easy, there's only two possible things that they could do. Carl, do you want to hear it? Just two things. Absolutely. One, I call it capturing the demand in the marketplace for what it is that you already do. That's it. Capture the demand. It's like holding up a sign that says car wash right at the corner of the intersection with dirty cars passing by. They're just going to show up because it's like, oh, you guys do car wash? Great. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to tell the people, we're a car wash. You want to come in? Great. Most people think marketing is difficult when all you need to do is just capture the demand of the thing that you do. Because a lot of times we don't we go into business knowing people want it, but we don't know how to capture the demand. The second part of that, and the only second part of growing your business on the acquisition side, is creating demand. Or in other words, creating awareness that drives the demand. And this is what a lot of people do when they post on social media and create this and do that. They're not capturing the demand. They're just sort of creating demand for the future at some point. And if you're hungry and you can take on more clients, if you have capacity, you don't need to create demand right now. You should be capturing the demand. If you had to go back and start in business all over again, what would you do differently? 
I would probably follow this 80-20 process of way more. Um, and the reason I say that is I was a generalist for a very long time. Um, it wasn't until we decided that we want to double down on B2B and then we were going to charge probably the highest end on the 80-20 rule for marketing companies. Um, and, and when we started to do that, we, we, we were doing very well for, for like our customers. We got better customers and better results. And I would have followed that way more, but the challenge is that you feel trapped, that you feel like you need, you know, to, to compete with the guy down the street, because if, if not, they're going to get bigger. Like a lot of small guys like me, web design and all of that kind of fall into that. Um, and I certainly did, uh, because we had a big team and we had to keep everybody busy. However, if I had reworked it constantly, I would have been in a different kind of business, right? Like it, we would have pivoted more than we did. I don't regret it, though. I'm very happy where I'm at. There's huge emergence in voice search, and that will continue as a trend over the coming years. How is that impacting your own clients already? Glad you asked that. Google actually shows you um, uh, what people are asking in their search results, and that specifically comes from if you ask me what Google either type in or what we ask on the phone or our home uh, you know, devices. And as marketers, what we're doing is we're literally copying that and making sure that we have that questions answered for our clients in all formats, audio, text, video, literally. That's, that's it. Every day new questions are popping up because people are asking it. And in order to show up, not in the top search results, just in the question section, you have to make sure that your company is answering those questions that people have. And so it's not to rank on voice search or whatever. It's to say that if they ask this question, you want Google to give your answer. And this is so critical because companies don't create that type of content. In your opinion, should businesses replace their blog with a podcast? I think a podcast probably could do better for them because you can turn that podcast into text audio unless you're going to stick a text you know, video or audio into the blog, which no, no one does. Text is easy to create. So my recommendation is to create content that are harder, not easier. Why? Because it's harder for your competition to do it. And Solomon, what are your thoughts on radio as an advertising channel? There's a whole segment of the population that listens to radio every single day because they have to, because they have a long commute. I think you're going to reach amazing audience. It could be very wealthy business people, wealthy business owner, depending on the audience. You will get them on radio because they have 45 an hour commute. What do you do? Listen to radio, music, the jokes, and so on. Listen to a program like this, and you get so much insight in your commute. You look like you went to an MBA class. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was business coach Solomon Timothy, and I'd like to thank Solomon for sharing his advice with us this morning. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.